I'm Dr. Mark Attala, and I want to welcome you to my office. I'm a cognitive scientist who studies time travel by replicating days from the past. So everything that someone who was alive on a particular day would be exposed to, from early morning newspapers through late night television, and everything in between. Now the day that we're talking about in this video is February 9th, 1964. That's my Paul McCartney imitation. And because that's the night that the Beatles made their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. This is the most meta video that I'm making because it's about what the Beatles read themselves in 1964. How do we know what the Beatles were reading? We have pictures of them reading um, these magazines. And so you can read them too. So let's get started with John Lennon's book, In His Own Right. And so this came out in 1964. He's the writing Beatle. Forget about the fact that, um, you know, Lennon McCartney was writing all these songs. Um, and George Harrison, too. I'm not sure if Ringo Starr did much writing at this, uh, at this time period. He's too busy playing the drums. Um, this is an unreadable book, even though, that, even though Paul writes the, um, the foreword to it. Uh, it has absolutely terrible illustrations in it. Um, I'll read you a um, snippet from, uh, this is a story called Partly Dave, and to give you a sense of it. Here, I'll hold it up like, like Paul does, or that John does too. So this is Partly Dave. There once upon a time was a man who was partly Dave. He had a mission in life. I'm partly Dave, he would groan in the morning, which was half the battle. Over breakfast, he would say, again say, I am partly Dave, which always unnerved Betty. So there's a... Um, He's not going to be the next um, uh, Faulkner, but that's okay, too. Here's our next one, which is Modern Screen, um, which we can see Ringo reading. Now, what is Ringo reading about? Well, it's got Mia Farrow. There's a big story about her because uh, it gets. she was on a show at the time called Peyton Place. Uh, she gets into her relationship with Frank Sinatra. Now, they eventually got married in 1966. Um, oh, I guess they should say that's the June 1964 um, copy of Modern Screen. Uh, but she talks about how she lost her virginity to Frank Sinatra when she was 21. Uh, but he does marry her two years later, so uh, he does the, good, the right thing. She was 23 at the time, and he was bumping 50. Uh, to put that in context, here's the original Beatles book. And Paul is reading this one. Um, he's probably reading about himself, um, which is also meta. And so um, he's described as uh, handsome and serious. And who really, who could argue with that? Um, but you can read it yourself and see, if, uh, see what you think about it. Uh, we also have Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. And Paul's reading that also. Um, I thought the most interesting thing in this magazine is the Jimmy Olsen's pen pals, where people have this parasocial relationship with a cartoon character where they write in because they have questions about uh, things that occur in the comic book or they want to know more about um, Superman and their relationship. Now, although there are no letters signed from uh, signed by from Paul from Liverpool. Uh, I think it's uh, still worth checking out. Our last magazine is actually from 1965, and it's the 16 Scoop, uh, the Beatles' complete story from birth to now. And Ringo's reading this, so I can only guess that he's reading about his relationship with his wife Mary Starkey. And because that's a Ringo's actual name isn't Ringo Starr, it's Richard Starkey. But uh, it's an interesting uh, because usually they would try to downplay the fact that the Beatles were in relationships because uh, it violated uh, kind of their marketing. Uh, uh, it was Paul, or excuse me, John was the only one who was married in 1964 to his wife Cynthia. But um, otherwise, they, they tried to make the Beatles seem available. And so 
uh, it's an interesting read too. Now I'll put links to all these below so you can read what the Beatles read too. But while you're at TimeTravelSimplified.com, um, why not become a time traveler and buy my book, Beatles in America, February 9th, 1964. It's guaranteed. Our motto is, it's time travel or it's free. Uh, I put a link to below to my Patreon account if you would like to support my research further. And I would ask that you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. And otherwise, have a great day.